Hey everyone, welcome to this short primer on our networking project. Today we are going to take a quick journey through different parts of the project to give you an overview of what to expect. So let's jump right in with part one. In this section, we are diving into the world of packet analysis using Wireshark. Wireshark is a powerful network protocol analyzer. It allows you to capture and examine data traveling back and forth on a network. To use it, you simply open Wireshark, select a network interface to monitor, and start capturing packets. In this project, we have already provided you with a PCAP or packet capture generator to generate a PCAP file specific to your GTIDs. For part one, you'll be, requ you'll be required to analyze this PCAP file generated with your GTID and you can apply filters to narrow down the packets you're interested in. For example, you can filter by IP address, protocol, or keywords in packet content. Clicking on a packet in the list will provide detailed information about that packet. In the lower panel, you can examine various layers of the packet such as Ethernet, IP, TCP, UDP, and application layer data. When you check the PCAP file in Wireshark, look for MAC addresses, introductory packets, initial website connections, and more. Through this packet capture, we'll try to identify the MAC addresses of the devices. These addresses are unique identifiers that help us distinguish one device from another on a network, like digital fingerprints for devices on the network. When a device joins the network, it introduces itself with initial packets. Pay close attention to the first packets exchanged by devices when they connect to the network. These packets often reveal crucial information about the device and its intentions. When devices access websites or services over the internet, they use HTTP headers to exchange information. In the HTTP headers of packets, you'll find the user agent field. This field provides valuable information about the device's user agent or browser. And Wireshark can also reconstruct and display data streams. You can right click any packet and choose follow to see the entire conversation between two endpoints. This is to help you understand what's happening in a network. Your part one task will be to answer the questions about the trace, such as identifying devices, IP addresses, MAC addresses, and recognizing encrypted and unencrypted data. Now let's move on to part two, anomaly detection. For this, let's first try to understand port scanning. Think of it like trying to find open doors on a network. Imagine a building with many doors and you want to see which ones are unlocked. How would you do that? Well, you would try to jiggle all the doorknobs, right? Port scanning is a bit like that. It's a technique where we send out a bunch of SIM packets to various ports on a network, which are like doors to services. These services could be web servers, email servers, or any application that communicates over a network. We're essentially trying to see which doors are open by listening for SYNAC responses. When we get a SYNAC, it's like finding an unlocked door. So port scanning helps us detect open ports, which could be potential entry points for attackers. Now let's move on to ARP spoofing. Picture this. You want to intercept someone's mail, so you steal their mailbox. ARP, or Address Resolution Protocol Spoofing, is somewhat like that. ARP is a protocol used in local networks to associate MAC addresses or hardware addresses with IP addresses or network addresses. When one device wants to communicate with another, it asks who has this IP address and expects a MAC address as the answer. In an ARP spoofing attack, an attacker tricks the device on the network into associating their MAC address with a legitimate IP address. This means they can intercept and manipulate network tra traffic, essentially performing a man-in-the-middle attack. It's a, secure, it's a serious security concern. Your task in this part two is to write a Go program that detects port scanning and ARP spoofing behavior given in a PCAP file. For part three, first, 
let's break down what man in the middle or MITM attack is. Imagine two people having a private conversation like sharing secrets through a locked mailbox. Now, if a third person manages to sneak in and get right in the middle of that conversation, they gain control over what messages are being sent back and forth. The tricky part is the messages can not only be intercepted, but possibly altered as well. But here's the catch. The victim, the two people in our scenario, shouldn't be able to tell that they are being attacked. That's essence of MITM attack. MITM attack is all about secretly intercepting and possibly manipulating com communication between two parties. Your task in this project is to implement a MITM attack involving DNS and HTTP, simulating a scenario between a client and a bank. And here's what you'll need to do. You'll act as a middleman between these two parties. For DNS attack, when the client queries a DNS, a record for the bank's domain, you'll intercept that request and respond with a spoofed address, directing the client to your own address. This happens fast, in under two seconds. Just like beating the real DNS server's response, this is essentially manipulating the address book of the internet. For HTTP attack, you listen for HTTP requests made by the client, forward, forward them to the bank server as if everything's normal. But here's the twist. You'll have to steal certain information like login credentials and cookies. You might even modify the data in transit, all while client and bank think they are communicating directly. Now, let's first understand what happens under normal conditions. The client, DNS server, and HTTP server each run in their own Docker container. The client operates in a straightforward manner, just like we would expect in a real-world scenario. And the first task is to ask DNS server for bank.com's IP address. This is a fundamental step in reaching any website on the internet. Now, once the client has the IP address, it authenticates to bank.com. This is where the user logs in securely, providing their credentials. After successful authentication, the client proceeds to perform various actions using its login cookie. This cookie is crucial for maintaining the user's session and accessing secure areas of the website. So in normal conditions, our client performs these essential tasks. Now let's explore what happens when things go off track. Now, let's shift our focus to man in the middle or MITM conditions. The client starts off by asking for the IP address of bank.com from the DNS server. This is the very first step in connecting to the website. Now, here's where the MITM attacker comes into play. Posing as bank.com, it responds to the client's query. The client, believing it's communicating with the bank.com, proceeds to send a request to MITM attacker. The MITM attacker being in control forwards this client request to the real HTTP server as if it's coming from the client. The real HTTP server, completely unaware of the MITM attack, replies to the MITM attacker. In this example, it says paid JSON $1,000. Now the MITM attacker playing both sides informs the client paid Sakshi $1,000. It manipulates the response. Every piece of data, every message, every interaction, it's all laid bare for the MITM to see. Now in part three, we are delving into the MITM conditions. The MITM will use DNS spoofing to deceive the client. And once that happens, well, everything becomes transparent to the MITM. To understand the function invocation, let's start with MITM Go. The main function needs to start two critical processes, the DNS server and the HTTP server, which are essential components for this project. Let's talk about the DNS part first. So inside the start DNS server, the handle DNS function is expected to be responsible for handling the DNS packets. It should start with the calls to has question for domain, answer for question, produce IP packet. Finally, it should call send raw UDP to send the spoofed DNS response to the client. 
in dns go the produce ip packet function returns the bytes of ip packet with the specified ipv4 udp and dns layer details it handles the serialization and checksums so that you don't need to modify it you need to modify the others the has question for domain function which should check if the dns packet contains a question for a specific domain an answer for question which should generate a dns answer corresponding to a question pointing to an ip address now let's talk about the handle http function inside the handle http function a conditional structure is expected for example if the request is to log in or to transfer it should call intercept and relay request now in http go let us go over the past two request and intercept and relay request functions pass through request function is to be used when you want to pass through the request to the http server it does not it, it does not change the incoming request except for stealing the cookies it should work in the following way set up a reverse http proxy to the specified endpoint it should save the default director which sends the request and then the proxy dot director callback should be overridden to steal the cookies and then pass the request to the server using the default director in intercept and relay request function this function is to be used when you want to intercept a request change a recipient in the body if it has the two parameter and relay the request to the http server it replaces any occurrences of spoofed with the original in the response it should work as follows set up a reverse http proxy to the specified endpoint it should save the default director the proxy or director callback is overridden to steal the cookies and modify the two parameter in the request and the proxy dot modify response callback is to be used to manipulate the response replacing spoof with the original both the proxy director and proxy modify response need to call function thievery.steal these functions are responsible for stealing the sensitive data that's a high level overview of how the function invocation is going to happen all the best for your assignment